In today's short video, let's have a review and analysis through the hot ongoing topic about China Evergrande's debt crisis. Is China Evergrande the next Lehman Brothers? What's going on guys? This is Baro aka Invest Mentor. Thanks for your time and watching. I hope you don't mind to hit the like and subscribe button first before everything. Your click to support always means a lot to me and this channel. In today's short video, let's have a review and analysis through the hot ongoing topic about China Evergrande's debt crisis. Is China Evergrande the next Lehman Brothers? China's biggest real estate developer, Evergrande, is in excessive debt of 300 billion US dollars right now. It's overbuilt during China's property boom of the last decade. The company has lost the confidence of bondholders, which don't think it can meet its debt repayment right now. And it has connection to major global asset managers that could get hit hardly if there's a default. Sounds sort of similar to the situation that overturned investment bank Lehman Brothers in 2008 during the Great Recession and sent global financial markets sharply down for months. No? That comparison to Lehman Brothers is all the range on Wall Street trading desk. Spheres over the fate of Evergrande has sent shockwaves through global stock markets on September 20th, Monday. But is it the right comparison? No. Of now, I would not say this is the kind of thing that has the potential for global contagion in the same way that Lehman Brothers did in 2008. Banks and brokerage firms like Lehman Brothers are interlinked in ways we cannot see with huge leverage. China Evergrande is also a highly leveraged real estate developer. In general, while any missed interest repayment on September 23rd by Evergrande from that 83 million would be an unwelcome news for market. However, the markets would universally agree that this is so far not a Lehman Brothers liquidity moment. Recall that back in the heat of the great financial crisis, the bust in Lehman triggered endless wave of selling across almost all asset classes for days. And all of this happened around the world to be brutal and terrifying to endure. However, Evergrande's situation wouldn't have that much same impact and that was seen in bond markets on September 20th, Monday, with Treasury going volatile. Furthermore, we saw solid buying in clinical sectors. For example, Marriott stock finished the session higher, and it's the same for some other travel stocks. This was more like a usual type of sell-off. It was also sort of a freezing in the credit markets on that side of thing during the financial crisis that is just not happening right now. So, all in all, investors certainly have to respect the current Evergrande situation. But, the Evergrande issue could actually be discussed further probably in October. Besides, according to other strategies, China Evergrande is probably too big to fail. So far, it's still hard to see how the Chinese developer would trigger another global financial crisis, especially when China has no desire whatsoever to chance anything like that happening. Beijing does seem eager to end the frenzy borrowing that got Evergrande in trouble. And China doesn't hesitate to attack companies that allow the Communist Party's vision for the economy. The next target could be Hong Kong property barons. But China would probably rather smoother the big and scary debt problem with cash than let the economy burn for a while right now. Again, the thought of a Lehman Brothers type of collapse in China sent US investors running on September 20th, Monday. It was the market's worst one-day slide in months and shattered an extended stretch of calm for global financial markets. Investors were rattled by news that the major Chinese real estate developer Evergrande is close to defaulting on a mountain size of debt and worried that Beijing will allow the company to crash and burn. However, many global asset managers think that China's economy has too much at stake to let that happen. They believe the social pact between the government and its people 
is going to drive an outcome here that's not going to lead to a Lehman Brothers type of move. Thus, Evergrande is probably too big to fail. And the impact of a default on this bond would have to be on Chinese banking system and the suppliers could be too many. So it's expected that the Chinese authority will step in and work through a restructuring in order to bridge through this movement without a more significant incident occurring. Evergrande is China's largest lender. It owes staggering 300 billion US dollars in debt more than any other publicly traded property developer in the world and has become the poster child in overheated Chinese real estate market. Evergrande is an important part of China's economic engine as well with over 120,000 full-time employees and countless suppliers and partners. Again, there's just too much at stake for China to let the company collapse. It just doesn't seem to me that that's gonna be a Beijing approach to let the company go down without any type of support for the creditor and the financial system to suffer. Very likely, Evergrande will be bailed out or at least allowed to fail in a structured way. But the bigger issue for investors is China's continued clamp down on the capital market. If President Xi's move against Tencent, Alibaba, as well as Evergrande, is this present she's trying to roll back a decade-long move towards Westerner-style capitalism? I think that's outlying risk that global investors will be really concerned about. And I think this Evergrande crisis will move along. And I think it will fade into the background and the markets will recover pretty quickly. But the wider issue will be, is it going to be a bigger move from President Xi? All in all, Evergrande may not become China's Lehman brother. Barclay argues the market environment isn't even similar to what happened during the collapse of Lehman brother. If we assess the default levels are pretty low versus the size of China economy, and the Citibank expect the policymaker to step in too. The conditions are simply not in place for even a large default to be China's Lehman brother's mode. Once again, growing investors' unease about Evergrande and the crackdown on China's real estate sector have caused a chain reaction across global risk assets, even trapping many stocks with less tangible links to China. S&P Global Rating warned on September 20th, Monday, that the distressed developer is likely to default if he doesn't get support from Chinese government. Policymakers will likely uphold the bottom line of preventing systematic risk to buy time for resolving the debt risk and push forward policy easing for the overall credit environment. Still, after all, some banks may become victims. Let's take a look over those names before we end up the short video today. CD Bank suggests that credit risk is the highest for China Mingxuan Bank, Ping'an Bank, and China Everbright Bank. Meanwhile, Bank of Nanjing, Chongqing Rural Commercial Bank, Postal Saving Banks of China are less vulnerable. And I will see any dip as an enhanced opportunity to buy quality names. Jeffrey Financial Group also sees little chance of systematic risk from Evergrande and advise investors to buy the dips of banking sectors. Jeffrey Financial Group has added Postal Saving Banks Asia to the top picks citing the lender's profit outlook and lower exposure to property sector. Besides, Jeffrey's other buy rating stocks include China Construction Bank and Bank of Ningbo. Alright guys, I hope the quick analysis and review over China Grande's issue will be really helpful and easy enough to understand, while some great great trading investment opportunity could be found from there. Please feel free to let me know any of your thoughts and comments and never forget to hit the like and subscribe button down below this video. I'm looking forward to having more with you in the next one. See you.